Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, I got something very interesting for you guys today. Today I'm going to be showing you another creation I've been working on. It's been on the back of printer for a while, but I promise you this is going to be something really cool. This is the new Dragon Mark V. I'm going to spawn this in. So compared to a lot of the other dragons I've made, uh, this one's a little bit different in that he doesn't have the long neck, the tail's a bit longer, and of course the overall design is a lot more anatomically correct, as you can kind of just see from looking around at it. And of course, um, it operates a lot differently from <laughs> all the other ones in the way that it's using some AI blocks and some other features into it to make it work a bit better. So of course, if we do manage to step away from it, it will try to walk towards us. That's just kind of a built-in feature that it has. But of course, the walking on it isn't the best. I'll go ahead and show you how to make that work a bit better. So of course, if we go down here, we can actually get into the dragon itself. And right in front of us here, you can see there's all these controls. I can't just describe how this all works. I'm just going to get this upright a little more. There we go. Let's just go and take a look around. So on the controls here, of course you can open the mouth with the first button here. You also have fire breath there. You know, pretty standard stuff. You have a timer for roaring. So we'll use the sound blocks on board to go ahead and make a roaring sound. Now of course, uh, 4 through 6 we're not going to worry about just about yet, that's a feature for later. Um, number 7 is actually another part of the mouth, you have a magnetic lock here so you can actually pick things up if you really wanted to. 8 and 9 we're going to get to later. So of course if you go to the second page of controls here, you have some interesting, uh, some interesting groups and I'll show you what these are for. So if I go in and press F9 here, I can go and control the dragon from this view, and if I use my mouse or my arrow keys, I can actually control the dragon's head and neck, and as well as the tail. So of course, if I look to the right, you can see I do that. If I look to the left, I do that. Same thing, looking up or down. You have all these controls, and I can move these around freely to do whatever I want, which is interesting. So that's where these controls come in. If you want to lock in a certain pose, you can press number one to lock the head in place, and you can use number two to lock the tail in place, like so. And of course, if you want to turn on and off the eyes, you have that control there as well. And then number four and five are for the legs, respectively. And but it doesn't really lock them. What it does is it turns them off. So let's say if you want to sit down, you can just go ahead and press number five, and it'll turn off the back legs. And of course, if you just like move around a little bit, you'll just kneel down. And of course, you could turn off both of them, and you could just go ahead and lay down. Just lock everything in place. Take a little nap, do whatever you need to do. It's pretty interesting. So you can use that however you like. And of course, number 9 is this AI Seek. That toggles on and off by default when you go a certain distance away from the dragon. That's just normal stuff. So of course, uh, before we get to anything else, I will show that this thing is capable of walking using your WASD keys. So if we go ahead and lock onto the dragon here to spectate it, if I press W, it'll start to walk forward. It doesn't have the best walk cycle, but it does eventually walk forward. It just needs to get to speed. Now, of course, this thing is very heavy, so it's probably not the best for walking around. But that's where the flight controls come in. The flight controls are what really makes it stand out, because, you know, what's a dragon without flying? And of course, you can see it does have some interesting wings on board. And these wings are a lot bigger than the wings on the other dragons. In fact, these wings are made to be proportionally correct to the size and weight of the dragon, so they are very large. So, to actually start flying, what you want to do is you want to press timer number 9, right here which basically opens up the wings. If you go ahead and press them, you'll see the wings will open up in this fantastic display. And just like that, the wings are outstretched. 
you do need to wait until that uh, rotor on the bottom uh, turns the rotor lock back on before you start doing anything else. Of course, your thrusters will be activated in this mode. You can see those are some very large wings. So then, sometimes what happens is that a certain part of the wing will actually get stuck while trying to fold or unfold. That's where 4 through 6 comes in. What you'd have to do is you'd have to turn off rotor lock with number 6, and then with numbers 4 and 5, you just press those until it goes back to normal. So now, to get flying working, you want to use uh, timer number 8. Let's go ahead and just align ourselves a little bit better here. By pressing timer number 8, we begin the, uh, the flight cycle here for flying. And flying is a little bit difficult considering there's a lot of subgrids on board. It's actually preferable to uh, lock your tail in place while flying. But of course, once you're flying, you can go ahead and begin flying wherever you want. So we're just going to go in and fly around with this. This can be a little bit difficult because <laughs> it likes to roll, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite nice. And of course, uh, if you're playing in creative mode, the hydrogen in the bottom right will basically act almost like a stamina meter. So you will need to land eventually, or you can glide to basically regenerate that stamina. Let me just go ahead and just let the tail do that. There we go. So if we go ahead and stop it right here, we can go into more of a glide, which helps us to save hydrogen and actually regenerate it a little bit. It is quite nice to fly something like this. It's a little bit different from your normal Space Engineer's uh, flight. <laughs> that was a bit tricky to get used to. To just tumble through these trees here. So if you want to go ahead and put the wings away, what you're going to need to do is you're going to first need to align your wings up or in the upwards position, like so. And then you're going to press timer number 9 to go ahead and put them back, going all the way down. This creation is a little bit clangy, but all works well. So as you can see, we're back on the ground here, and you can see that part of the uh, part of the wing there didn't unfold the way that you'd want it to. So we try to walk backwards here. So I'll demonstrate how we fix that. Number six, and then you can use four and five to basically create and detach rotors, which will cause it to want to go back to its normal form. Or if that doesn't work, you can go ahead and press number 9 again to go ahead and get everything back to the way it should be. And then try again to go ahead and fold the wings away. Let's go ahead and wait for it to lock by itself. Now I press number 9 again to go ahead and fold it. There we go. I guess there's not really all that much to show here. I mean, I've already shown all the features of the dragon. It is quite nice. You're able to use this in a lot of different ways, or well, however you say fit. I will show one more feature, and that is that uh, because this dragon is a bit more anatomically correct than the other ones, it of course has a, an interior of sorts. So it's kind of best to demonstrate this in an open area. Let's go ahead and go probably up here where it's nice and grassy. So, if you were to take this into combat, which I don't really recommend if it's not combat capable at all, there's a few things you might want to uh, be aware of. <laughs> so of course, depending on where you take damage, you'll have different scars and marks, as well as the bones on the dragon itself. Since you can't just take apart the dragon, you'll see that it does actually have the, uh, the bones, muscle, and flesh built into it here. Let's go just cut this part off right here. Yep, there's the rib cage. I 
it does have a spine, which we can cut into to go and see that. Actually, I'm just gonna remove this. If we cut a little bit deeper. Yep. So yeah, as this takes damage, you will actually see things like that. Which is kind of just an interesting feature, makes it a little more lively, I guess. I guess that's really all that needs to be shown here. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this build. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's on the workshop for you guys. Uh, I'll put it in the description as well if you guys want to mess with it there. Uh, take care and have a great day.